and welcome to this top eight game from the UK Thrones War with me, Rebecca Walker, and joined as always by Richard Walker. Hey. Hi. And on the left today, we have Wilco Van Dyke playing Lanny House of the Red Door, and his red door there is Bells of Castle Rock. And on the right hand side, we have Franca playing Barrow Alliance, and he um, is playing with Rose and Cohor there. So just looking through there and um, getting ready for their setups. Of course, with Red Door, you only get a four gold setup. Oh, we've got Wilco and Franca. We do. I said that you're finally joining us properly and paying attention. Yeah, so these guys are Matamate, mm -hmm. Dutchies in the UK, making the top eight, well, showing us how it's done. <laughs> Do you want to run through the setups? No, you can. Great, thank you. You're welcome. Um, on the right hand side, we have a green apple knight um, with an attachment and another character. <laughs> I need you to do this because I don't know what these cards are. <laughs> Who's set up are you doing? Uh, Franco's. Alright, oh, so we've got Green Apple Knight with a Warhammer, uh, the Bastard of Robert, along oh, with the yeah. Rose Road, and that could be the so, Honey Wine. Ah, yes, the Honey Wine. And then on the left hand side, we have two Gold Roads. Gold Mines. mines. Gold yeah. Mines. So he, he's Red Door Bells. Mm hmm. Oh, uh, yeah, so that's two Gold Mines. Uh, so Lanny Red Door is quite gold hungry. Mm hmm. Which is why we have both players with um, at the gates. So Wilco there grabbing a Gates of the Moon. Uh, Franca, however, going for a Great Hall. So that's his restricted card. Okay, so right off the bat, I would say this is not a favourable matchup for Wilco. Why? Um, well, first of all, I think Franca's going to get um, a Seed by the Guard maybe on... The Bow of the Catholic Rock. Either way, Franco has control um, for Wilco's location base. Yeah. Which I think will be important. Franco's deck can also go really, really fast. Um, he can win in you know, three turns quite quickly. Okay. He can rotate attachments in and out. I, yeah, I don't think this is a favourable matchup. I think Wilco's deck could be a little too slow. Normally, Lanny Red Door deck. Um, that have bowed are quite slow. They take quite a long time to win. Okay. And it, because they need to build up that back row, they need to build up the econ base, they need to build up the draw. I mean, and he's I, got. I quite... think Franco's deck just going to be too fast for it. Okay. Milwaukee does have already quite a nice um, back row there, gold wise. It's um, not enough. Not enough, even on setup. He's let's, not even marshaled yet. Let's, let's assume he. Well, he's going to get what? Eight gold? Uh, yes. Yeah. So, he, by the time you put two cards in shadows, what impact is he going to have on the board this round? Yeah, that's true. So, it's difficult. Especially when you're fronted with Renly, with Knighted, a Green Apple Knight with a Warhammer. More, right? I mean, one more Knight on the board. And Frank could have a non-kneeling um, dude. What's the... Um Restriction on knighted. There is no restriction. Attached character gets plus one strength. Could you not have popped that onto another character then to make it a knight? Is Renly a knight? Renly is not a knight. Ah, oh, okay. But Renly, you can nail your faction card um, and put in a character printed cost, whatever, X, X is equal to Renly's strength. Ah, so increasing his strength is always good. Yeah. So is he naturally three strength, is that right? He is. Yeah, so the knighted were given plus one, right? Yeah. Okay. He's quite flammable, is Renly. <laughs> he is rather, isn't he? But he seems to survive this tournament. So as you predicted, uh, Walker there has put two cards into shadows. It'd be interesting, I mean, I'm sure he'd prefer to try and get another econ out. Um, going for another card in Shadows. So you've only got two gold remaining. A Rose Road, I guess, would be perfect here for him. Just <coughs> a free location base. <coughs> Get him a bit of gold ready. But it doesn't look like he has one. Oh. Did I miss a gold somewhere? Four, gold, four cards in Shadows, but one gold remaining. Oh, 
Where's that extra gold come from? I don't know. Um, it's likely because... I don't know, Franco had an attachment on setup, didn't he? So he didn't get the extra gold from the cohort. No. He did open up the gate. Yeah. Because um, he went and got the gates of the moon. Then I'm not sure. Hmm. Maybe he thought Franco had a gates of the moon and collected an extra gold for that. Maybe. Okay. So. Franco did the power challenge. Yeah. Is there any point in defending it? Probably, Probably not. not. You like your opponent to get a power on their faction card, especially if you're second player in the first turn. Gives you something to take. Yeah. But it does mean that Franco can trigger his cohort, so get rid of that knighted. Yep. So he's not going to see the battles at this stage. Uh, he doesn't have any gold to bestow it. I don't even know if he runs it. Um... You think so? I think a cohort deck should run at least one seized. It would make logical sense to give yourself mm -hmm. those options, especially if they don't believe he is running political disaster. The Renly is now going to get Oathkeeper. The Renly is now five strength, and uh, I don't think Oathkeeper usually gets triggered for its effect in cohort. But then I guess it's flexible; you can do whatever you want. Yeah, exactly. It's, it gives you options, doesn't it? And it means that your opponent doesn't know what it is they're going to do. So you have the entry come from Renly. And this could result in a trigger from Oathkeeper. But it could also just result in another cohort. I guess it depends on what Frank wants to do, basically. Yeah, I'm not sure why Wilco had the extra gold. Um, I haven't worked it out yet. Have you? No, I, I, I think maybe he just miscalculated, to be honest. Right, so he played a very large shadow, I think, mm -hmm. which gets him some gold. He's got quite a bit of gold there, extra. Yeah, so he just collected two gold for the vowels coming out of shadows. For a very large shadow, yeah. Yeah, sorry, that's what I meant. Is Penny sh one? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think he just got an extra gold by accident, somehow. That can't be the case. Broco's like a good player. <laughs> he knows what he's doing. So, so yeah, that extra gold, we must have got it from somewhere, but uh, that's given him... So a very large shadow came out of the shadow to reduce the net, cost of net character by three. He triggered the barrel to get two gold, so that had him... Basically, had three gold there and a reduction of three. Brought Tyrion out for five and then used the last gold to pay for Penny. And now he used the Regent Guard to put Tyrion back in his hand. So they've managed to get challenges, you know, opposed. Yeah. What should I say? Attacked. You're looking really confused. Yeah. Um, no, I'm just. Uh... Mathing and math isn't my strong point. <laughs> so we finished that round then with Franco on two. Uh, Wilco not gaining any power that turn. But he did manage to defend the intrigue challenge, didn't he? So that's always good. Kneeling his faction card, why is he kneeling his faction card? Because he played clever faint and put those cards back into shadows. Ah. Oh, yeah, I see it. Yeah. So this could be a reset. Yeah, so we've got Valar Morgulis uh, from Wilco and Return to the Fields from Franca. So well called on Franca's part there. But I think, as we've discussed before, Shadow's decks quite often will um, play their resets or turn two, maybe turn three, depending on what their opponents got out. Franca bringing through those cards, well, sorry, discarding through those cards to gain three gold and draw three cards, and just killing off the bastard um, as the extra person. Yeah, so. Uh, look at this. Cool. No, go on, I'm done. <laughs> as you can say, it looked like the the reset was telegraphed heavily by the clever thing. Mm. Um, so, yeah, if, if your shadow player plays clever thing, then. 
especially when he puts all of the cards back into Shadow. This is a very good indicator for what's going to come next. And Franco had the tech in his deck, in his plot deck, to take advantage of that. Yeah. So yeah, very well played, and he's got loads of money now and loads of cards. Yeah, I think um, a lot of Shadow decks make it quite obvious when they're about to Valar. You see them playing Unexpected Guile and putting things back into the shadows. You see them playing things like oh, the Iron Bank have its due um, in the Lani deck, as you say, Clever Faint. So there's a few cards that they'll play that make you sort of think it. And as we've said, you know, round um, turn two is often a reset turn for a Shadows deck. But, I mean, how bad is it? If you're the Lani, if you're the Lani Shadow player, and your objective is to wipe the opponent's board, mm. which had been done, yeah. So the only thing you didn't get was pleasure that those characters weren't in the dead pile. Not only that, your opponent got an extra three cards and three gold out of it. Now that is bad. Mm. But your objective was to clear the board. So you've effectively done that. Um, and to be fair. The Green Apple Knight and the Courtier, yeah, cool. mm -hmm. um, aren't unique, so it doesn't make that much difference if they're in the dead pile. The only one that makes the biggest difference really is um, if Runly was in the dead pile. Um, I guess it's not a lot different to Franco and Dead playing Late Summer Feast, you know, gold wise, but the fact that they get three gold and three cards on top of their normal collecting income. Stick in the core a little bit. Although, like I say, work I wanted a clear board. You've got a clear board. Mm. And you know, you have to time it right with Return to the Fields. Like, if you guess it wrong or if your opponent's bluffing you, then your Return to the Fields is wasted and you have no, um, you know, comeback. You have no um, solution to an expected reset. A duped question there is really good. Um, stop that Randall from getting milked or anything. Interesting. Um, Randall would intimidate. Yeah. And Ice Keeper. And King of the Wall Crescent. <laughs> okay. Option. I feel like um, it looks like he's got a lot of cards up, but I feel like he could have used another dupe or a bodyguard or something like that on one of those characters. Well, he's going first. He's got the opportunity to go and grab a bodyguard if you want. One. Yeah. The three one cost attachments in play. Yeah, just, he just needs to get that challenge through, doesn't he? And what strength is Randall on with the Oath Keeper and the um, Warhammer? Does Sorry, I was yawning. Can you repeat? That's alright. Does the Warhammer give any extra strength at all? Is it just Intimidate? Uh, if you, if the character printed cost 5 or higher, it gives Intimidate. If the character is lower than printed cost 5, then it gives plus 2 strength. Then Randall K, it gives Intimidate. Okay. And then Oath Keeper is plus 2 strength? Yes. And the reaction is, if you win by five, you can go search for a non Tyrell character mm. and add it to your hand. So I like both of those attachments. They're both one of the better positive attachments. And it's mainly because they don't just do one thing. They're flexible. They can do two yeah. things. So if you've got Randall in play, you can attach it to him and give him Intimidate. Or if you've got a four-strength character in play, you can attach it to them and give them six-strength. It's flexible. It does two different things. You like cards that offer lots of options, don't you? Like um, the Bob, where you can choose to keep, you know, five and overs now or four and unders now and stuff like that. Yeah, you gives, like having all those kind of things. It gives you options on fewer cards, mm. and it rewards player skill. Yeah. So if you can make good decisions consistently, you will be rewarded. In theory. In theory. Unless. Your opponent plays bound for the wall and takes your randle and mm -hmm. kicks your ass. Or unless your opponent's Hanno, who apparently is just winning everything recently. Hanno Congratulations, Hanno. <laughs> Hanno's parents never taught him how to lose. Is that what it was? Yeah. I see. That's what it was. What was it you were telling me the other day? He's won like, was it 14 out of the last 27 tournaments he's been in? Something like that. That's absolutely insane. I don't think I've even like... In fact, I think his... And winning a tournament odds are better than my general tournament winning odds. Probably. Like, <laughs> the amount of wins I get in a tournament, which is really depressing, actually. <laughs> and Hanno doesn't play in a lot of small tournaments. He plays in big tournaments. Mm. But why are we talking about Hanno? I don't know. We've kind of digressed. I apologise. kind of digressed. Yes, I know. It's my fault. We've got a game going on here, Rebecca. Yeah, well, Frank is getting power. There you go. 
You're not getting a lot from Wilco's house card. No. So Frank are doing a power challenge with Randall. He has got the unopposed and the... Um, oh my god. Honey wine. Honey wine? Honey wine. Reaction. I don't know what is with me recently. I am forgetting so much. Well, you, could you haven't played enough. You need to play more. Yes, boss. Um, triggering cohort to get rid of um, Oathkeeper there. And a bodyguard here I think will be really good. Oh, what are we going for? Okay. The deceased. Yeah, that also seems really good. Because I don't think Wilco's got any gold, has he? He has not got any gold. Mm. Probably ready for trade booth next turn, though. Indeed. So I wonder if um, Wilco here is able to get another challenge through. I quite like Cohort as an agenda. It's really, really good. Like, and really, really good play it, pe players play it really well. Like mm. Kostas, Franka, you know, Niccolo, Hanno. Like, the best players do amazing things with Cohort. But you know the one thing that puts me off? What? Shuffling my deck all the goddamn time. Uh, yeah. I want to shuffle my deck all the time. <laughs> when I'm throwing it's fine. You click shuffle, it shuffles. In real life... It's like another minute <gasps> wasted. Oh, he should have got the bodyguard. So, unopposed. And the poison coin there, sending Randall into the dead pile. Ah. What? Where do you get the coin from? Where do you get the gold from? He played a very large shadow. Nice. And brought Penny out. Mm hmm. A little wasteful, but he did the job, got the poison coin. Got rid of the Randall, so you could argue it's not really that wasteful because that cost Frank a seven gold worth of investment. Yeah. And, well, six because the attachment got cohort. And work I didn't put a lot of investment in and mm. got rid of him. I think um, I, I quite like, I don't know if you noticed because you were talking, I quite like Frank as not taking the renown on Randall there. Um, I don't know if it's deliberate, but I like to think it's deliberate in that against shadow decks it can be risky to have power on your knelt characters. It can be risky to have power on your standing characters. Mm. But you know, with the knelt and with the power, that's like two ways that they can kill you. Yep, yeah, that is true. But Randall's not at a danger from Robert Strong, is he? Is that what you're hinting? No, no, is he? But, you know, <laughs> but I get your point. The virus is a thing. Yeah, the power thing. That's that's what I meant all along. I was just testing you on the other thing to make sure you... And if you're attention. thinking about virus, you could check out our live stream from yeah. yesterday with James Wamsley against Adam Huang. Yeah. Uh, the okay, interesting indeed. virus play there. Check it out. Oh, yeah. If you're, you know, bored. bored. <laughs> and you want to, you know, watch videos. Yeah. I can't believe we're live streaming stuff now. I'm like getting all technical and shit. Yeah, I just pressed the button and it worked. Thanks, thanks to, Buzz. Thanks to <laughs> Buddy's repeated helps in the past. Now it just kind of loads itself. So. Yeah. Buddy's been pretty awesome helping us with the live stream, so I feel like we do need to give a shout out to Buzz and say thank you for your help with that. Yeah, thanks, Buzz. Buzz is never going to listen to this, but thanks, Buzz. <laughs> What's going on here? Um, we have a trade route into buying the gates, and Franca is first player. He has collected his gold. Both of these guys are really, really nice guys, aren't they? Yeah. They're really nice guys to hang around with and you know have a beer with. They're just like Wilco, just fun and smiley. Mm. Franca's always fun and smiley. <laughs> like the Dutch guys are the best, aren't they? Not to say that other nationalities and things aren't great at the game and as people, but yeah, we do like the Dutch guys. <laughs> we do. I mean, they're much better than the English, right? Such a miserable bunch, the English. Yeah, especially those guy Northampton lot. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't hear what you said. Uh, nothing, nothing, darling, dearest. No, you are. It's okay. You're we're talking wonderful. over each other all the time. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> You're a wonderful person. Everyone thinks you're great. They don't think that you're grumpy. Honest. What's going on the board, Richard? Why don't you tell us? Because you told me off for speaking over you. 
So we have a Bob with a bodyguard and a Warhammer. And then next to him, we have Justin Massey. Is that right? What? Justin Massey? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. 12 golds worth of dudes and a bodyguard and a Warhammer. Thank got a God lot of for gold. great halls. What do you play? Play Barn the Gate, two great hall. Kingswood, yeah. Lots of stuff. Lots of stuff. Tempo. I mean, the big reset's gone. So he's probably feeling a bit safer to play out a few things at the moment. And most decks don't run Valar M and Valar D. Normally it's Valar M and Spurs Snow. Some shadows do. Yeah. Some do. I think it was more common when uh, when Greyjoy big dudes were the mm. thing. But I think that's less of a thing. Um, is that Tyrion that he's just marshaled? Can confirm it is Tyrion. So we've got Tyrion the Hound, Penny from last turn, and... Oh crap, what are they called? The Regent's Guard? The Regent's Guard, yeah. And they're all marshaled because Franca had barred the gate. He has. And rather than just put cards into shadows and um, prepare for next turn, Wilco has decided to actually marshal some cards here um, to stop Franca from rushing ahead with lots of unopposed challenges. Bob, though, is going to be a bit of a pain in the bottom because, of course, he does have Intimidate, which means that he should be able to limit the amount that Wilco can do. Oh, that is a big power challenge. So we're going in with everyone for the power. And that should let Franca win and win by enough to be able to trigger the honey wine. Yeah, so just depending on Penny. Any other reactions from Franca? So drawing a card. Power on the honey wine. Um, wasn't unopposed, so we take claim, I guess, next. Yep. And then this would be the point where Frank could cohort if he wished. What might he want to go and get? I think the Warhammer is superfluous. Um, it's giving Bob Intimidate, which he already has. Mm -hmm. So he could sacrifice that to get... Uh, anything he wants really. He could he could grab a milk for Tyrion. I don't know how important that is. He probably want to grab something um I don't know really. No idea what's in his deck. Hmm. I guess he wasn't one of the ones that put his deck up online after then. Franca, maybe. Wilco did. Did he? Um Wilco's deck is online. I guess the um the slight risk of... And he does run Valor de Harris. He does? Yep. He doesn't run first snow. How did you get that list up so quick? Magic. I consulted my memory. You was already looking at it. Is that what you were doing when you made me talk for ages by myself? Yeah. <laughs> I was just checking it out, yeah. <laughs> so I guess the only slight risk then of um cohoring the Warhammer is Wilco might play in nightmares if he runs them. Does he run them? I don't know. I'm looking for Frank's deck now. <laughs> which does not appear to be on the line. It doesn't, okay. You may continue. Thank you. <laughs> um, so, Frank has gone for Seized by the Guard, which actually makes total sense because um, it's not like anything's going to be coming in out of shadows this turn anyway. Um, so, and it, it used up its last gold, so it would be falling off next turn. So he's decided to sack that for an extra bodyguard on Bob. Wow. Interesting. Want to claim soak. Knows mm. he's going to lose a military challenge. Doesn't want to leave Bob. You know, vulnerable to the poison coin too. Mm. So I mean, if he took military claim there, his only bodyguard, well he wouldn't, would he? He'd take Crescent Why is, why is Bob restood? Because Justin Matthew has text. Um, After a barrel character you control gain power, stand it. Once per round. Is it another barrel character <coughs> or just a barrel character? 
another, I think. Okay. I don't think he stands himself, but I could be wrong. I'm always wrong, generally. Wrong is me. No, I don't think that's true. I, when I was editing the video, I did wonder... Um, I thought, like, oh, he isn't he the Sandy one, but I thought he stood himself for some reason um, when he gained a power. But obviously it's gone somewhere else. Well, I'll check it out, I guess. So we have the military here. And that's gone through. No, it's um, after a Bower character, so... No, oh, so he can stand himself. But Justin Matthew also gets renown mm. while you control a king character. Ah. That king attachment doing double duty. King Crescent and King Bob together. I was going to say, we've got a couple of kings there. There's an alternative universe. <laughs> so, claiming the dupe. And the honey wine there is also going to power. We've got a milk now on Tyrion. And Bob is intimidating the... Regent's Guard. He's jumped quite ahead here, Franca. It's a quick deck. Mm, I think it's going to be difficult here for Wilco to catch up. Especially with that honey wine. Yeah. When you've got Bob on gazillion strength as well. A bazillion strength, yes. <laughs> oh no! So Wilco doing a power and thinking that he could poison coin uh, Justin Massey. But because Tyrion has been uh, milked, he no longer has the shadow keyword, which means that you can't trigger the poison coin. Correct. Which is unfortunate for Wilco. Mm. But Wilco does manage to get through the challenge, which allows him to pull Franca back ever so slightly. And now on to that, our next box. That was a good spot by Franco. He was really on the ball there because mm. so often it, it happened that people miss it in the heat of the moment. They yeah. don't think about it. Uh, but he was aware of that before it even happened. I wouldn't have. He was aware of it when he milked Wilco, the only standing character. Do you reckon he did it on purpose because of that? I reckon that was a side effect. Like He wanted to milk Tyrion and he also knew it would... Get rid of the shadow keyword. Mm. That's what the man does. The man, like, he knows shit. <laughs> he knows he shit. He knows how to play cards. <laughs> That's and probably better. Franca, rumour has it, he also reads the card. What? Yeah. And his favourite cheese is Parmesan. Is this true? Why do you know that? No, seriously, why would you even know that? Why would you like just go and ask someone, do you like Parmesan cheese? Well, no, I think when we did the Throne for a draft, Adam sent some people a questionnaire, Franco answered it with some random questions, and one of them was, what was your favourite cheese? And I think it was Parmesan. Franco likes Parmesan. <laughs> well, fun fact for the day, guys. Maybe we should, you know, ask our top four, um, you know, semi-finally. So a few random questions so we can regale our viewers with some interesting choice facts I about our favourite players. I, I don't think they're going to be that interested. Excellent, I'll do it. Great. <laughs> you should ask what their favourite Pokemon is, because that's all what the uh, group chat seems to be talking well, about. Well, I can't recently. now. You've literally just ruined the surprise. It's better when it's just completely random and off the yeah, wall. Yeah, but this won't go out until Wednesday, so you've got time to ask them tonight. Yeah, but by the time they watch this, we wouldn't have commented <laughs> on the next video. And everyone knows that Franco loves Parmesan. Maybe we need to try and travel a bit. Go yeah. back in time and stop this happening. But it looks like I might be asking Franco another random question because he just seems in pole position to do a win. Oh, Imri. Ooh. Oh. Is he going to do an Imri win? You were so excited about Imri when he came out, and I was I like, what is, what is this rubbish? And you were like, no, 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 Rebecca, he's really, really good. And then I've seen him a couple of times in action, and he's like, ah, that's why Richard likes him. He's so good. Yeah, if you're going to win this turn, well, he's just going to cement it. Get rid of your location. You ain't going to need him anymore because you're going to win this turn. Kneel out your opponent's board, do a thing, win the game. Thank you very much. <laughs> 
I guess sticking with the North plot um, is really going to be, well, sad times for Orko because he's not going to be able to trigger any things that he might have needed to stop all the horrible things that Frank is going to do to win. Yeah, the bar in the gates and the king in the north really put a shiv in the back of Shadow's deck. Mm. Like Tom Bree King from Final Fantasy. <laughs> just, just a little little dude walking up to you with a knife and he gets to your stab. Dead. Wrecked. That's in the front though, isn't it? Rather than the back. Yeah, it is. Unless you try and run away. So are you just basically saying that Wilco's seeing the little shift coming? Yeah, just like the Tom Bree King. I see. This this commentary has gone really weird the last few minutes. I apologise. <laughs> Why? Pokemon, Parmesan cheese and shivs. People love this shit. This is why they tune in. They don't tune in for us talking about the game which they can see happening for themselves and us repeating the words of what they're actually doing. No, they know that. They're coming here for the flavour. For the flavour? For the flavour. The Parmesan cheese flavour? Fl- yeah, yeah, that maybe. <laughs> I mean, Parmesan isn't my favourite cheese. What's your favourite cheese? My favourite cheese is Stilton. I like the Stilton. That's Not great. because it has mould in it, but... Frank wins. <laughs> Franka does a big ass power challenge. He'll win by five, triggering the honey wine. He'll get renowned on two characters and he'll get claim. Oh, well done, Franka. <laughs> too, just too far for the Lani door, especially with the plot. Called it. Well done, Franka. You called it at the very beginning of the game. No, I mean, he called it. Oh, and he. I think, well, it. yeah, I guess I might, might have called it, but. It's not like you went to Thrones War or anything and no. <laughs> sure. So, um, yeah, there are a couple of um, streamed games on the channel. If you want to look back at a couple of those ones from the UK, not the UK, from the World Tournament, you have, you have a point? No, I'm just going to ask you, uh, who yeah. might we expect to see in the top four in the next game? Um, I believe we have Franca playing Barrow Rose Cohort. Yep. And he playing is he playing James Wormsley? Yes. Yes, who he is. is playing Greyjoy Cohort. Yes. Two cohort decks. Should be cool. fun. I was just like trying to confirm the people that I need to speak to about random facts, so <laughs> Okay, I see. Um so you can tune in next time for some random facts about the top four players, I guess. Excellent. Great. And um, yeah, thanks for watching. If you'd like to support the channel, you can do so by going to patreon.com forward slash the White Walkers. And we will see you next time. Bye. Goodbye.